I'm David Meltzer, and welcome to Two Minute Drill. Each contestant will get two minutes to pitch, then they will answer one question and get feedback from our other judges. I'll be giving my good points throughout the pitch and during their answers. After the pitches are complete, our JA Impact judge, Scott Absher, CEO of Shift Pixie, will decide which pitch had the greatest impact and a donation will be made to Junior Achievement University worldwide. Finally, our closer, Rory Kataya, the CEO from Verb Technologies, will decide our champion, who will receive over $50,000 of cash and prizes. We'll be right back to hear our first pitch here on Two Minute Drill. Welcome back to Two Minute Drill. With me are our judges, Roy Kataya, the CEO of Verb Technologies, and Jason Waller, CEO of Power Home Solar. Let's get started. Let's bring in Gregory Sklar, CEO and founder of CoCaptain, to hear what he's doing to help prevent the spread of COVID-19. Greg, you're on the clock with Two Minute Drill. Thanks so much, Dave, and good to see all you guys out there. Thanks for showing up today. I'm Greg Sklar. I'm with CoCaptain. I'm going to start out with my ask because I know that you love that first. Um, what I'm looking for is the best way to distribute a thousand instruction manuals on how to prevent COVID-19 from home. So what we did, I'm a NASA ambassador for the COVID-19 team. We collaborated with Harvard, Stanford, and we and about 15, 15 to 20 other universities and four other space agencies. The way that we approached this problem was by thinking about it this way. If we had a team that was alone on another planet and they called back to Earth to mission control and said, hey, we need your help. There's this virus. It's attacking us. What are we going to do? We know all the things that they've got on their shelves. And so we go to our lab, just like you saw on the Apollo missions, and we try and figure out what combinations would best work in order for them to prevent the spread of COVID-19 or to get COVID-19, or most importantly, to actually keep it from getting severe. So I actually had my lungs collapse when I was in high school, and then I started my own pharmaceutical company. When March came around of 2020, I saw with COVID-19 that this thing was exploding. I wanted a solution and I wanted a natural solution. We came up with them and now in Spain, Korea, China, pretty much um, about 12 different countries right now, it's being proven consistently that this disease actually attacks the base of our immune system. So with our team, we've actually put together a project where we are reaching out to nonprofits across the world to interact with their home regulatory agencies. So what are you going to do with the 50,000 bucks? Uh, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pay off our patent attorneys, my brother-in-law who keeps bothering me that we owe him money for helping to put that together. The second thing I'm going to do is buy my dog back. I gave her, away, I literally gave her away two days ago because of this. I've just been like inundated with this project and can't take care of her. I got a phone call this morning that um, she uh, she killed the cat at the house that she's at, so they want to give her back. Um, so hopefully it won't cost me $15,000, but if I do get my dog back, I'm going to get her the best food and the best cage, and I can't believe I can give her away. Greg, listen, um, I like the concept and the why, but I'm struggling to see this as a business. You know, the pandemic, they come, they go. I understand your heart is in the right place, but I can't see how this can be a business that you can scale, how you can grow when you're depending on this staying long-term or longer than most would anticipate. The key word here for you is simplify, right? What, what you've created is re-engineering of a vision situation where because of all the hyper details that you gave, it created an opaque blur of, from your ask of what you wanted. So if you can simplify what you're doing and state the facts after the ask, I think both these judges and I would find a very compelling uh, pitch for a B Corp, uh, as you stated. So simplify, simplify, simplify. Great pitch, though, and I love the fact you asked first. Cool. Thank you. 
Next up, we've got Alex Carabray and Cormac Hayden, the co-founders of Imbue. Guys, welcome back to the show. You're on the clock for Two Minute Drill. Hey, David. I'm Alex. I'm Cormac. And we are the co-founders of Imbue. So Imbue started as an aggregator for the fitness industry. It allowed members unlimited access into the studios they love, uh, pay gyms two to three times what competing services would, and never put us at a movie pass, uh, at a movie pass fate, um, aka negative margins. After talking with hundreds of gyms and some of our influencer friends in Los Angeles, uh, we realized that there was a you know, real market need, and so we pivoted and created a new solution. So we're a two-sided mobile app platform that allows fitness influencers to go live and offer fitness live streaming classes to all their followers. Um, we developed the app ourselves, but anyways, how it works is as an influencer, you log in, you sign up to our app, and you can immediately go live and go live to all the users on our mobile app. As a user on the other side, you can search for any influencer and access all their live stream videos and either pay for each live stream on the spot or buy an unlimited membership to all the influencer live stream videos. Um, within the live stream video itself, we have chat integration, so you can follow along and really create this emotional fitness experience. We're also integrated with Stripe, Mux, and Plaid APIs. Uh, so the whole idea is to build these beautiful fitness experiences. And how we make money is we charge 15% uh, on single tran class transactions and also the memberships. Um, we're doing our, so the app is live. We're doing our first test class this week with one of our friends, Kevin. He has about 10,000 followers on a social media platform. Uh, just to, you know, test all the different features of the application, make sure the live streaming works, the payout functions, um, things like that. And after that, we have some friends at USA Skiing Snorting, USA Skiing Snowboarding, who have anywhere from, you know, 50 to 100,000 followers who, who will try our product. Uh, and then, uh, when we get to the high stage, which is some of our parkour friends based in Los Angeles, um, they, they're willing to try our product as well. Um, so, I mean, we've worked really hard and we've created a really great product and we think we have a really great go-to-market strategy. Um, so our ask is, you know, what, what do you think and what would you improve on, um, on our go-to-market, especially as we're going to it this week? Well, guys, first, uh, putting aside the fact that I have a, a great affinity to live stream video, and we could talk about that another time, I think you guys did great. I think you, you played off each other really, really well. Uh, you summed up the business. You described exactly what it does, how you're going to make money. And then the thing that really resonated with me is that you acknowledged that you had to pivot. Every business has to pivot at some point, and knowing when to do that and, and navigating that successfully, really, kudos to you guys. Great job. One, one of the best pitches that I've seen today, my opinion. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. I think you guys did a great job. One thing I'd like to understand, because I didn't, is have you guys made any revenue? Do you have any customers yet? I know that you have influencers, but how many folks do you have signed up for the service right now? Um, so, so we don't have any. Uh, we're doing our first test class this week, so the, the app is live. Um, but with our, with our previous iteration in the, uh, the aggregator model that we had, uh, we had you know, over 30 gyms and we generated about $1,000 in revenue just to like, prove the concept. Um, but since we've pivoted, uh, there's none so far. Great job, you guys. Although you guys break the anomaly of the three golden rules of partnership, which by the way is number one, never go into a partnership. Two, <laughs> If you're gonna go into a partnership, make sure the other guy has more money than you. And then three, as my dad always said, if you didn't listen to number one or number two, go back to number one. <laughs> uh, but you guys are obviously really good partners and I could tell by the pitch, you can see the camaraderie, the collaboration, which are two of the key components of being compassionate capitalists and leaders. Uh, the only comment I have, uh, a tip would be to slow down a little bit. You got Meltzer problems, your brains are moving way too fast, your lips are trying to keep up. Uh, so just take a breath and, 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 you know, I know you're excited, but you could slow down just a little bit uh, so that we can catch up to how smart you both are. Otherwise, great pitch. Congratulations. Thank you. Sorry about that. That's what we need to work on is the, is the speed of the talking. So I appreciate that. More Two Minute Drill is coming up next. But first, check out this tip of the day from Jason Waller with True Underdog Podcast. Hey, I'm Jason Waller, True Underdog Podcast, with your tip of the day for Two Minute Drill. One of the best ways to establish credibility isn't to rattle off your accomplishments. It's to illuminate where your weaknesses may lie. Not being willing to share that information is what makes you look untrustworthy. But willingness to be open makes you more attractive business partner. Showing where you overcame some weaknesses shows the company can handle adversity. We're back with more great contestants here on Two Minute Drill. Let's get right to it. All right. And now to tell us about her company, 
Rook Modest Apparel, say hello to the company's founder and CEO, Alizar Tawil. Alizar, take it away. Hello, everyone. I'm so grateful to be here. My name is Alizar Tawil, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Modest Wear brand, Rook. David, we were hoping you could put us in touch with a business mentor. You see, I started Rook as a frustrated consumer. Ever since I decided to wear the Islamic headscarf, the hijab, I, like so many other Muslim women, struggled to strike a balance between dressing modestly while looking fashionable. I would often spend much time piecing together multiple items of clothing to ensure that I was sufficiently covered. This involved long sleeve shirts, underscarfs to keep the scarf from slipping, the scarf itself, and pins just to keep it all in place. I wanted something that would help make getting dressed more efficient. Then it hit me. What if I created a product that could do the function of all of these items and make any outfit instantly modest? That is when the Amida body, patent pending, was born. The Amida body is essentially a hijab bodysuit. As you can see, it is a bodysuit with a headpiece attached, designed to provide full coverage and prevent garments from riding up. We created two versions of the product, one with and one without sleeves. Now, modestly dressed women will no longer be limited to shopping from modest wear retailers alone. They can shop with, from anywhere with confidence while saving time. We've already seen mainstream fashion brands make several investments in the sector to meet the growing demand of the modest wear consumers. In fact, according to the State of the Global Islamic Economy 2021 report, $270 billion was spent on modest fashion in 2017, and it is forecasted to reach $361 billion by 2023. Since going live earlier this year, we've sold over 180 units, and in just 10 short months, we have gained over 10,000 followers between our socials. Our customers have praised the Amida body for its versatility and for making their lives easier. So far, all of this has been self-financed while working a full-time job. However, we could really use a business mentor to help us scale to grow from a part-time home business to a full-time business. So David, can you see any reason why you wouldn't want to help us make the Amida body a staple in every modest wardrobe? Thank you so much for having me. Well, I, I'll tell you, first of all, loved your energy. You are incredibly engaging. Uh, I, I, I like everything that you're doing. Um, I don't know a lot about the particular market that, that you're going after, uh, but it sounds to me like it just makes sense. It sounds like there's a real need in the marketplace for what you're doing. I haven't heard of anybody doing anything even remotely similar to this. So, um, yeah, you, you did great today. Uh, you know, congratulations and, uh, yeah, keep it up. Keep it up, hopefully. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> You've got the energy, you've got the smile, you've got the passion, you're excited, you believe in your product. I mean, you've got me like, I mean, I get it. How, how do I get to support something <laughs> like this? Because you made me feel like this is something that the folks need. So I think that your pitch was great and on par. My question would be with the $50,000, what would you use that for? How would that propel your business? I'm so glad you asked that because honestly, so first of all, we would have to, it would go towards paying off the patent that we spent on as well as the initial investment. Um, obviously it came from my savings. So I took out a loan against myself. And once we have that out of the way, the idea is that we will be able to properly scale the production and reduce our cost and therefore, you know, increasing the margins. And once we are able to achieve that, then we will be able to do excellent marketing and content in order to just spread the word and potentially penetrate further into the North American and European markets. What a polished pitch. And the, even to the point where you finished at a calm pace right at the point of one second left. It was incredible practice. Uh, and I think it should be used as an example. You are a classic example of why I bet on the jockey. Uh, you know, there's a million great horses out there. Uh, but the jockey's going to win the race for you in the end and bring the most out of the horse. And that's what you're bringing right now. You got kids, you got a job, you, you have, you know, all types of different social uh, disturbances right now. And yet you're accelerating, growing. And I think you did a phenomenal job of showing what we do with practice and passion and purpose. And I have no doubt that you'll be successful. And to answer your ask, I would be more than proud to be your business advisor. So please reach out to me. Congratulations. Thank you, David. <laughs> Congratulations. You guys are awesome. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. With us next is Richard Hanbury. Richard is the CEO of Sana Health. Richard, your two minutes starts now. Thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Hanbury. I'm CEO of Sana. Uh, we are at home. Uh, pain and mental health relief with this device. Uh, we're a venture-backed company. We've raised $11 million so far. 
Um, we're going through clinical trials uh, at the moment. So the, my journey into all of this came in a Jeep crash accident in the Yemen in 1992. Uh, I had to drive off a, a Jeep off a bridge in order to um, avoid a head-on collision with a petrol truck, uh, 60 foot down into a dry riverbed, and all of that resulted in a spinal cord injury and a nerve damage pain problem that was so severe that I was given a five-year life expectancy. Uh, I had to make a device to fix my own level of pain, and it's been a lifelong journey since then to uh, bring that to help lots of other people. Uh, there are 50 million Americans with chronic pain. Uh, 10 million of those have fibromyalgia, which is very similar to the type of pain that I had. Uh, we've been going through clinical trials to solve that. Um, currently, we are five times better than the best available drug and with no side effects. Um, that fibromyalgia affects 10 million Americans, and that's our first market. Uh, we've done four clinical trials. Uh, we've got two large ones in process at Duke and Mount Sinai. Uh, we are on market as a wellness device and we're going through the FDA approval to enable us to market direct to people with fibromyalgia. Um, the device works by simply you put it on, it uses pulsed light and pulsed sound to get the user into a very deep state of relaxation. Um, we've got great results on anxiety and depression as well. And we're raising additional money to do additional clinical trials and additional indications so that we can go out and help many, many more people. Um, basically, COVID has driven up mental health issues, and we can help solve that with a simple at-home use device that anybody can use anywhere. And we're looking for additional investors uh, to $20 million pre-money, um, and the more help we can get, the better. So thank you. I loved your pitch. I love what it's about. My wife and two of my girls have major anxiety and depression, so I take it personally, and I think that's going to be a great device, something better than a drug or just going outside. People need to be stimulated in the house. I live in Michigan. There's not a lot of sunshine like California or states like that. So you need things like this out in the marketplace. I loved it. Your pitch was great. My question would be, you've raised a lot of money and I see where you're at in this business. With the $50,000, this is, is going to help somewhat. Do you have other employees that you're bringing on? Are you, how, many, how much staff do you have now? And, and where do you see this actually going live? What's the timeline? Uh, so we've got a team of 14 people at the moment. Um, we are, so the devices are available direct to consumer um, via our website currently as a wellness device um, because the FDA has already said we are a low risk device. Um, we are getting through the FDA process now to allow us to market specifically for the indications that we have clinical data on. Um, and the 50,000 is um, going towards collecting more of that clinical data so that we can expand the number of people we can reach directly. You know, this space is blowing up and you had such a great pitch. You left very little room for improvement. One of the areas would be to talk about how the wellness space and the wearables in the wellness space have blown up from neural feedback to companies like Muse, who's one of our sponsors with the meditative. So we're, we're talking about is light, sound, frequency in order to heal, which like you said, is very low risk. It's very easy to get approvals. Uh, because light, sound, and frequency have very uh, minimal uh, damage that they can occur. So the only suggestion I would have had for the pitch is to talk about, I think you left a little bit of meat on the bone. That space is a multi-billion dollar space, exponentially growing and accelerating, and you have a unique offering that I haven't heard before specific to a huge demand. So congratulations on a great pitch. I look forward to seeing more progress and congratulations on raising $11 million to start. That is not an easy feat and, and great job. Thank you very much. What a great group of contestants we've heard from so far. Thank you, Jason Waller with Power Home Solar for coming on the show today and for giving some great advice and feedback to our contestants. We'll be right back to announce today's winner on Two Minute Drill. Hi, this is Scott Epps, your CEO at Shift Peaks, here to present this week's Impact Award on behalf of Junior Achievement Worldwide. I'm not sure I've heard a more noble mission than the one Richard is on to end chronic pain across the globe. After hearing Richard share a bit about his own life story and the reason behind his mission, giving Santa Health the Impact Award was a no-brainer. Richard, a $1,000 donation has been made in your name to JA Worldwide. Your donation will help support initiatives and technology and sponsor a specific project or initiative for another young entrepreneur. Keep up the great work and congratulations, Richard. Welcome back. 
man, I'd hate to be in Rory's shoes. The moment we've all been waiting for. Rory, the CEO of Verb Technologies, will choose the best pitch and winner of over $50,000 in cash and prizes. Rory, who is going to be the winner of Two Minute Drill? Well, I'll tell you, this was a tough one. We had some really polished presentations, great pitches, great companies. Um, it's a very, very hard one, but... <laughs> <laughs> There's always a winner. <laughs> but, but there was one that really resonated with me because it, it brings attention, in, in my view, much needed attention to a community that I think is not really represented in the marketplace with a product that I think is really appropriate for our time. I, I, I really believe that this is a person who deserves the $50,000. I'm gonna give it away already. She's got three kids. She could really make that 50,000 go very far. She deserves this, David. She deserves it. So the winner today is Alizar Terwill. Hey. All the way from Jordan. You're gonna be my training video. I don't need to mentor you. You need to mentor all my people. That was a perfect pitch. And we look forward to working with you, supporting you, and someday remember us when you're the CEO of a billion dollar company worldwide. <laughs> you got two guys that might need jobs someday. <laughs> Thank you, congratulations. We look for great things from you. Thank you so much, Alizar Tawil. Thank you, David, and thank you, Rory. All right, amazing. Thank you, Rory, and once again, congratulations to Alizar, who's taking home over $50,000 in cash and prizes. Thank you, Scott and Jay Worldwide. Thank you for all of our contestants, but most importantly, thank you to Clarity Experiences for producing this amazing show. And of course, thank you to all of our generous sponsors for providing over $50,000 of cash and prizes to our contestants. Remember everyone, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. See you next week on Two Minute Drill. The best part about being on the show, um, probably looking forward to it. It was just a super cool experience. I mean, it was three guys that like obviously knew what they're doing, have been through this a lot, have heard all the, heard all the pitches before. Um, there was a great site, it was super entertaining, it was super, um, super energetic and super exciting to just share um, such an awesome idea with such an awesome crew. I guess the nicer adrenaline buzz of, of uh, knowing that the message is getting out there. I think it was validation that I really am onto something really good. So that just, I mean, that was, that's my drive that to know that like I'm, I'm onto something and I just need to keep pushing forward. <sighs> The end consumer is the one who's creating. So like, I'm very proud of that, that I'm, I'm, I'm catering to people just like me. So I'm in their shoes, I understand their needs, and I'm glad that I can be the one to help provide solutions for my target market, I guess.